Hello everyone and welcome to Psychopathology Lesson 2. Um, this lesson is actually going to be split into two separate videos. Uh, you've got this first video which is technically Lesson 2.1 and in this video we're going to look at definitions of phobias, different types of phobias and characteristics of phobias as well. And then we're going to finish off with just a little bit of a look at a couple of exam questions. And then the second video which is Lesson 2.2 um, I'll put a I'll put a link to that in the description section below. Um, lesson 2.2 is going to look at behavioral explanations for phobias, and that's going to focus uh, very heavily on things like operant and classical conditioning. Okay, so let's make a start. So, phobias come under the category of anxiety disorders. OK, um, and they are anxiety disorders that are characterized by an excessive or an irrational fear or excessive and irrational anxiety triggered by an object or a situation. The thing that makes a phobia a phobia is that the fear that is being experienced is completely out of all proportion to the actual stimulus. And the fear that's being experienced actually leads to conscious and active avoidance of the stimulus or of an area or a situation where the stimulus might be encountered. So there are three main types of phobias and we're going to go into a little bit more detail as to what they are, um, but they are specific phobias, social phobia and agoraphobia. Okay, and on the next slide we will have a little look at what they actually are. So specific phobias are, well, it's quite self-explanatory. They are fears about specific objects or situations. Common ones include things like spiders, snakes, dogs, the dark, you know, things like that, blood, injections. They're all kind of specific phobias. Then you've got social phobias. Social phobias um, are phobias that relate to social situations. So it's things like public speaking or talking to a group of people, let's say at a party or something like that, using a public toilet. All of those things are um, social situations and would come under social phobia. And then finally, we've got agoraphobia. Now, agoraphobia is a little bit of a complex one. Um, a lot of people actually think agoraphobia is simply a fear of open spaces but actually it's much more complex than that. So agoraphobia is actually a fear of being in situations where escape might be difficult or a situation where help wouldn't be available if things went wrong. So it's not just open spaces or the outside. You know, it could be things like um, being scared of traveling on public transport, or it could be things like visiting a shopping center or leaving home. Leaving home in itself is a is a form of agoraphobia, um, but it is in general being in a situation where escape may be difficult or where help wouldn't be available if things went wrong. Okay, so those are your different types of phobia. Um, it's useful to know what they are, just you know, for everyday life, I suppose, but also for psychology. Um, these are the three types that you need to be aware of. They can come up in exam questions, you know, application questions, that type of thing. You could get asked to uh, to write a definition of phobias um, or of a specific phobia. So the next thing that you need to know about is the characteristics of phobias. Okay, so for every mental health condition that you come across in A-level psychology, there are going to be three categories of characteristics, whether that's phobias, depression or OCD. The first category is behavioural characteristics. So behavioural characteristics um, is all about actions. You've then got emotional characteristics, which is all about feelings. And then finally, you have cognitive characteristics, which is all about thoughts um, and interpretations. So let's have a look at the behavioral characteristics of phobias. So the three behavioral characteristics that I'm going to go through with you are panic, avoidance, and then freezing or even fainting. 
Okay, so panic is fairly self-explanatory. That is that typical screaming, crying, running away, that typical panic behavior when you come across something that you don't like. You've then got avoidance, which is uh, what we talked about earlier. That is that conscious um, and active avoiding of the stimulus or of a situation where you might come across the stimulus. Okay, so for example, if you're afraid of spiders, you may categorically avoid the garden shed or the garage because you think you might come across a spider in there. And then finally, you've got freezing or fainting. So very often when people come across um, a thing or a situation that they have a phobia of, um, they will just be rooted to the spot and not be able to move. So they'll be frozen. Um, in very extreme scenarios or very extreme cases, people might even faint. Um, so that's also a behavioral characteristic of phobias. Interestingly, the whole freezing and fainting thing is an evolutionary characteristic um, because it comes from animals um, who would very often um, or who will often faint or play dead or freeze when they come across a predator because the predator might then think that they are actually dead and leave them alone. Okay, so those are your behavioral characteristics. Um, there are other ones as well, depending on which book you're using, but um, any of those three um, are fine to use. If you know two, then you're probably covered um, for all eventualities, but if you wanna learn three, then that's fine as well. We've then also got emotional characteristics. Um, emotional characteristics are essentially excessive and unreasonable amounts of fear, anxiety, and panic okay those are those are your emotional characteristics and we don't really need to explain what that is everyone knows what fear feels like everyone knows what anxiety feels like with the increased heart rate and all of that stuff sweaty palms getting into that fight or flight sort of situation um and then panic uh, this is emotional panic rather than behavioral panic but experiencing any of those to an excessive or unreasonable degree in relation to a, um, a situation or a stimulus that would constitute uh, an emotional characteristic of a phobia. And then the final type of characteristic is the cognitive characteristics that come hand in hand with phobias. And cognitive characteristics are all to do with thoughts and interpretations of events. Um, so we've got things like selective attention to the stimulus okay so an example of that would be if you're afraid of spiders let's say um, and a spider runs across the floor in the room that you're currently in your attention will be on that spider and everything else that's going on in the room no matter how important it is will all just kind of drift into the background and you won't be able to focus or concentrate on anything the only thing that you will want to do is make sure that that spider is still within eyesight because you want to make sure you know where it is at all times another one is irrationality of thoughts and resistance to reason so if we use a different example let's say somebody who's afraid of flying um, so the irrationality of the thoughts might be i can't get on a plane because it's going to crash and obviously the extent of the irrational thought will then come hand in hand with you know the panic and the the attempt to avoid it and the irrational fear and anxiety and, and all of the stuff we talked about before but somebody who is in that state and somebody who has that level of phobia about flying is also going to be very very resistant to somebody telling them well actually statistically flying is the safest form of travel and so if you think about it it's unlikely that the plane is going to crash but they're going to be resistant to that rational thought and the irrational thought is just going to kind of keep taking over and keep dominating um, you've also got a recognition that fear is excessive. Okay, so somebody who has a phobia will be well aware of the fact that their excessive anxiety and their irrational thoughts are excessive and irrational. There's just nothing that they can do about it. And it's this recognition that sets a phobia aside from something like a delusional mental illness like schizophrenia where an individual may not be aware of the irrationality of their beliefs or the unreasonable nature of their beliefs. Okay, and then you've got a final one, which is cognitive distortions. 
okay and cognitive distortions is essentially where you see the stimulus as being something far more frightening than it actually is so as an example somebody who is afraid of clowns might not see a clown looking like this all smiley and colorful and you know unlikely to hurt you in their mind the clown might actually look a little bit more like that and so every time they see a clown no matter how happy and smiley the clown is in their mind the only thing that they can see is pennywise and you know that can then also um, feed the phobia Obviously, with cognitive characteristics, you've got quite a few there to choose from. You don't necessarily need to remember all four. And depending on which book you're using, obviously, there may be some different ones that you get presented with. I would say if you know two, then that's fine. If you know three, then you're covered for everything. Um, you're unlikely to ever need more than three of the um, of the characteristics. Okay, so whichever three that you want to use, whether it's one of um, the four that I've given you, or whether it's you know from somewhere else, then you know it's up to you. Whatever you feel most comfortable with. So to finish off, I've just got a couple of exam questions for you. Um, obviously, this is only a very very small topic um, and it then does go on to other bits and pieces in phobias um, so for this particular bit the introduction and the characteristics of phobias this is the type of question that you could come across um, as you can see they're mainly description with a little bit of application obviously that doesn't mean that you know you can't get other styles of questions but like I say, it's quite a small topic so chances are it's going to be something like this so the bottom one, what is meant by a phobia? Very straight two mark question, nice and snappy. Nothing too complicated there. And the middle one, a four marker, outline characteristics of either phobias or OCD. So obviously they're giving you the option to choose whichever characteristic you want to talk about. However, four marks, um, I would suggest that you do at least two because you'll get one mark for naming the characteristic and then one mark for explaining what that characteristic is um, and then finally you've got that top one um, so describe one emotional characteristic so they're giving you the type of characteristic that they want and then more importantly as well they are asking you for an emotional characteristic that somebody might display if they have a phobia of wasps so the thing to be aware of there is that I would just to be safe I would make sure that I am mentioning wasps in my answer okay and that is the end of part one. So go ahead and click in the link down in the description section and that will take you straight to part two where we'll look at behavioral explanations for phobias. I hope it's all made sense. Thank you.